those of you who don't know, the UN Security Council, of course, voted to effectively invade Haiti. So they're going to, they, they're doing it to bring peace. It's important to know that both Russia and China abstain from this completely. Um, Kenya is sending troops there, like a thousand police officers there. That's not a good thing. The United States is only sending a hundred million dollars, more of course, but they they said that they're only going to send a hundred million dollars. And that they're not actually going to send troops there. Well, it turns out that was a lie. There actually have been special forces in Haiti for like the last 40, 45 days or so. Dan Cohen reported uh, yesterday, actually. They're claiming. No, they're not claiming. This is actually true. The president, Ariel Henry, invited the United Nations in. He said because of the gang violence. It's, it's crazy. It's always gang violence, terrorists, rebels. I can't get my country under control for some reason. I don't know what it is, but I'm trying to protect democracy. Now, <laughs> you guys know if the United Nations, especially the UN Security Council, in the same UN Security Council that is effectively headed by the United States, if they are going into a nation with military force, how much democracy do you think exists there? Hmm? How much democracy do you think exists? It's either they're very democratic and they're not and, and they weren't and they weren't invited. They were, but the UN decided to go there anyway. That's usually when the Human Rights Council gets involved, right? The Human Rights Council, the same Human Rights Council with Saudi Arabia and the United States on it. <laughs> but when they're invited, that's when the UN Security Council votes and says, we'll go help you out. Do you know why there's a bunch of civil unrest in Haiti right now, ladies and gentlemen? The people probably before rioting would vote out the president. Try that first. See if something new might change things. They, they, they couldn't do that. Because the president canceled the elections this year. And if they didn't like him the last time, like they could have voted him out the last election, except for they couldn't do that because the elections were canceled before, too. And once Henri took over after Moise was assassinated by the by a CIA. Like by by a, literally, it was organized by a Fed, like uh, operative, which is crazy. That's a whole different conversation. But once Moise was assassinated, he actually appointed Henri. That was only supposed to last for 120 days, and uh, and on the 121st day, they're supposed to hold elections. Yeah, those elections didn't happen. Henri he he canceled them. And you would think that maybe the legislature was stepping right, like the assembly. Or the Senate, maybe one of them would step in. Yeah, uh, all those seats are empty. All of those seats are empty. Supreme Court, nah, basically not, not, it's not functioning at all. Ladies and gentlemen, the last, the last time Haiti had an election was 2016. That is the last time that Haiti had an election, y'all. <laughs> so do you think this is the unrest in Haiti is a bunch of gang violence and they're just out of control and they just are committing violence for the sake of committing violence? Do you, like, do you think that's what it is? Or do you think what's actually happening is there is a dictator in power? This dictator is a U.S. puppet. He is a Western puppet. This dictator now wants to maintain power, and he requested the assistance of the United Nations because he knew once he canceled another election, it's 2023, bro. They haven't had an election since 2016. They haven't chosen their president 
And even that wasn't really a choice. But they haven't had the opportunity to choose their president since 2016, people. So do you think that once Henri decided he was going to cancel another election, he knew what was coming? And in order to maintain his dictatorship, the dictatorship that is approved by the West, he knew that he had to invite in the United Nations and specifically the United States. And what's crazy about the United Nations being involved at all is that they were actually, I don't know if I know this, they were actually in Haiti for 17 years. They were in Haiti, Haiti for 17 years. Do you know what they achieved? Not a goddamn thing. The only thing that they achieved in Haiti, the United Nations, was that they managed to bring more guns into the country than had ever existed before. So it actually they made the situation worse. That's what's happening in Haiti right now. In other words, it's an invasion to protect the dictator. And they know that this is Haiti. Haiti has a track record of overthrowing people. And the more, especially right now, the more frustrated people get, the more they organize. And then what happens next? The dictator gets overthrown. So, of course, what is the United the US, the, the UN, unfortunately, now Kenya? What do they do? They go to protect it. I mean, bro, this is the the United States, the United Nations, the, the UN Security Council, they have never met a dictator they didn't like until that dictator stopped doing what they wanted them to do or until they needed to save, go, escape go. But generally speaking, the UN has not met a dictator that they did not like. Hell, if you're a dictator, you might end up on like the the the, the humanitarian committee, the, the human rights committee. <laughs> Seriously, in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> that is what's happening in Haiti right now, bro. They are invading the country to protect the dictator, and that's not being discussed enough. I know people are saying like, oh yeah, like we, we, you know, no intervention, no intervention. This isn't just intervention. This is basically the opposite of Libya. Like, you know how they went into Libya, they called Gaddafi a dictator, and then they got him, a, they, they funded rebels, terrorists, really, and assaulted his regime and got him assassinated by calling him a dictator. This is literally the opposite side of that. This is our dictator is in power. We want to make sure that you cannot challenge him. So we are going to send weapons that you cannot possibly compete against. We're going to send troops from multiple nations. The United States already has special forces on the ground. Apparently, the entirety of 7th Group is there. And they are literally about to turn Haiti upside down to protect the dictator who is canceling elections again. The world we live in, I mean, these people are evil, bro. I don't know how, it's, like, they're evil. They're not even, you got, they applauding Nazis. You got another speaker fired because he wants to give money to the Nazis. You got Zelensky, the, they was like, you know, they hit him with that. They always say, what do you mean? You know, Nazis. He's Zelensky's Jewish. Yeah, uh-huh. And we like racism was suddenly resolved in the US because Obama's black. Come on, bro. That's the dumbest. Come on. You got the UN literally like not even pretending that they're about protecting democracy. You want to go protect democracy? You want to go protect human rights? How about you send a little troops, some, 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 some troops from the UN to go bust up Israel's ass? How about that? You really want to you know, protect human rights? How about that? Go send them to Israel and bust their ass. But no, you want to send one of the most highly capable militaries in the world in several in, in the military and police force from several nations to protect the dictator 
who was not elected for a government that doesn't have and they and they keep bro how they how they don't keep calling Putin a dictator they call Putin a dictator every chance they get but on re he's a president nobody elected him but he's a president doesn't have a congress at all assembly house senate nothing but he's a president doesn't have a supreme court but he's a president Zelensky canceled political he canceled all every other political party but he's a president is canceling elections but he's a president but maduro's a dictator even though he has a legislature he has an election they call evo morales a dictator even though he has a legislature he has an election he has a supreme court and a legislature putin has elections legislature courts But Henri is a president, and the the latter are dictators. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That is criminal. And more people need to be talking about this situation in Haiti. For the love of God. I'm so sick. I'm going to rant before I go. But I'm just so sick and tired. Like, the moment that like that a like something like this with Haiti something with Africa something with uh, any anywhere in the Caribbean even in Brazil no one gives a fuck when it's happening everyone wants to do a documentary about it and talk about it after it happens No one wants to talk about the fact that Nigeria has a president that's literally a fucking drug dealer. He's an international drug dealer from Chicago who has a fake college degree. He's literally getting investigated. Him and his university, I think it's Chicago State University, Tanubu. The man is getting a vest. In his whole life, it's false. The U.S. placed him there. Nigeria is like in chaos because of the U.S., But, you know, there's a bunch of black people, so nobody cares. Nobody wants to talk about it. Like, there's a whole drug dealer from the U.S. that was planted. Not only He was not only planted in Nigeria as their president, he was also planted as the, the, the chairman of ECOWAS, which is like the, the Western, West African countries, like their coalition. And that's how people get caught off guard whenever something like Libya happens. They're like, what the hell? How did this even happen? Well, they were setting the stage in Chad to send those terrorists into Libya so that Gaddafi was forced to respond, obviously, forced to defend his people. And then they used that against him and said he was attacking his own people. Y'all, people took so long to arrive to the conclusion that Assad was being set up when they were like, oh, he's attacking his own people. Why? Because he had to attack these terrorists. Do you know if, if you would have been paying attention to the Gaddafi situation? when it was happening in real time you would have known Assad they were trying to play the public on Assad from the beginning because they didn't even use a different playbook they use the exact same one but it doesn't fall into you know I know African problems don't fall into the algorithm no one cares about it because the algorithm does you know Haiti's problems don't don't get boosted by the algorithm so no one cares about it Like, I'm tired of seeing documentaries about the shit that happens in black countries. Like, by the same people who have the influence to talk about it now. I got huge respect to Dan Cohen because Dan Cohen's actually been covering Haiti for a hot minute, trying to bring attention to the shit that's happening there. David, uh, who covers a lot of stuff that goes on in Africa, uh, there's like, there's, but there's just not enough. Like, bro, these issues, I don't know if y'all been paying attention. But these issues are damn near more important because the fourth industrial revolution cannot happen without the uh, without uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, without Nigeria, without Niger, 
without Mali, Burkina Faso, and all the other West African countries. It cannot happen without Haiti. People are, for are some reason, completely unaware of the fact that World War III is basic. It's already people. We're, we're starting World War III. We're, it's already here. What do you mean? They were applauding Nazis before the U.S. ever decided to start fighting them in World War II. The war had already started, and they were applauding Nazis. They were letting Nazis host the Olympics. They were letting Nazis run around with Nazi flags and shit. And FDR's people administration was a pot were apologizing. I don't know what happened to my camera. I'm about to figure it out though. Give me a sec. Oh, here we go. We back. Like, but no one thinks that World War III has officially popped off. Why? Well, most of the war is being fought in Africa. And about to be fought in the Caribbean. And there's a bunch of black people in the way. Just like nobody knows about just how many people can Hitler killed in Africa. <laughs> These issues matter. And we have it's like it's up to us to elevate them and up to people to talk about them. And y'all, like people, y'all know all the journalists, all the independent content creators, a lot of them cover stories that you tell them to that you suggest to them, that you show interest in. Most of them don't cover, they cover sometimes stuff I'm like that CNN and Fox News talk about. Some of the times they cover stuff that trends, but oftentimes you're the ones that make the stories trend. So if, I, I can only do so much, you know? These, you could, for, for no other reason, you got to care about these issues because they will affect you. They will affect you soon. You know how it goes? It may not affect you today, but it'll affect you tomorrow. People, we, we, y'all, everybody here, I know y'all been paying attention to Ukraine for a long time. What did we say in the beginning? Okay, y'all can mess around and not care about Ukraine now, but when that, that inflation pops up, when them gas prices start going crazy, when them wheat prices start going crazy, when the oil starts getting crazy, when the inflation starts getting the reckless spending and then the protection. We were, if you were following the Ukraine situation from the beginning, everything that is happening now, like before it was, oh, that's the Ukraine's problem. But we were saying, this is what's going to happen here. These are the problems that y'all are going to have to face with, you know, Western Europe. The, those independent journalists were saying the same thing. Like, y'all do know, like, that shit ain't going to stay over there. Those problems are not going to stay over there. It's called reverberating impact. So, what the fourth is when we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution, like, shit, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure France is finding out the hard way. People in France weren't holding. Well, I can't say they weren't, you know, they, they'd be protesting all the time, but people in France maybe weren't aware of just how corrupt the relationship between them and Niger actually was. And now <laughs> the uranium prices in Niger, they could have been doing fair business with Niger this entire time, but the uranium prices in Niger are skyrocketing by 20% because they kicked France the fuck out. France didn't want to leave and now they're paying the consequence and guess who's going to have to feel the consequences now? France. The people of France, not Macron, because for some reason, that motherfucker, he still keeps getting elected. That's a whole different thing. Y'all gonna have to explain that to me one day, France. But it is in, it's the people who are going to feel that. Just like the right now, y'all, if you, all the Western countries, really, y'all gas prices are going crazy because of what's happening in Ukraine and because of how stupid the U.S. is for messing with Russia. And the fact that Saudi Arabia and the, and the OPEC countries either stay neutral or they're allying with Russia. It, if it isn't affecting you now, it will affect you eventually. And that's why you 